blockchain billionaire. One of my favorite board games is Monopoly. And you know the rules of Monopoly. You roll the dice, you work your way around the board, and you buy real estate, you build hotels, you conduct financial transactions with other players and with the bank. The banker is a very powerful role in Monopoly. We trust that the banker has our best interest in mind. I can tell you though, I've played rounds of Monopoly where there was a lack of trust in that banker, where <laughs> occasionally money falls out of the bank and into that banker's own personal account. What if we can play Monopoly without a banker? Or more specifically, what if all the players in Monopoly could share the responsibility of being the banker? Or in more general terms, what if we could remove the central power authority from lots of areas of our lives and work? That's where blockchain comes in. Blockchain is a real game changer. There are game changers, at least one every decade. 1970s, the mainframe became very popular. That was the game changer. We're able to automate lots of human activities. We're able to store data centrally. 1980s, personal computer with a game changer. We could automate even more activity, store more data. That's my first computer, Commodore 64. 1990s, the web was the game changer. Now we can access data and services from other computers. 2000s, mobile computing, we can access this data, these services, anywhere we go, smartphones, tablets. When you think about all these game changers, they all get us closer and closer to our data management battle cry, which is getting the right information, the right people, the right time. That's really what all these game changers are about. Blockchain takes us a step further, and we're in the midst of the blockchain decade now. It's about getting the right data to the right information at the right time without needing to trust those people. Okay. I'll talk about blockchain briefly. I'm gonna define it for you. I'll give you definitions through different perspectives. I'll tell you about the three types of blockchain that exist. I'll give you an example of each. I'll talk about the top five challenges of blockchain. And we have a really fun game we're gonna play as well. First, the definition. Blockchain is a ledger. A ledger is a spreadsheet in its simplest form. In fact, you can imagine the simplest kind of spreadsheet is a spreadsheet with two columns, credits and debits. And so a blockchain example could be just keeping track of money that's received and money we pay out. But a ledger could be any spreadsheet. It could be a record of entire transactions like a claim, a stock trade, a book order. A ledger could also be a spreadsheet of things I own, assets, inventory. So blockchain is in its simplest form a ledger. It's a shared ledger. Shared meaning there is no central power authority. We don't have to put our trust into a large organization. Instead, there are multiple record keepers. Lots of record keepers, could be dozens, hundreds, thousands, that all have identical copies of the same spreadsheet, making sure everything stays in sync. Blockchain is immutable. It's an immutable shared ledger, meaning these spreadsheets we can only write. We can never update or delete data from a blockchain. So once it's in the chain, it's there for good. If you think about CRUD, create, read, update, delete, blockchain lets us create and read, but never update or delete. So once it's in the chain, it's there for good. That's the business definition for blockchain. From a developer perspective, what blockchain is, is a free, distributed, NoSQL database that is fault tolerant and almost 100% secure.